Hey ladies and gents and welcome to episode 16 of the Controlled Interest Gamecast where we talk about video games and everything happening in the industry. As always, I'm joined by Jordan. Yo, yo, yo. And Dominic. Rap, rap. This is our post E3 episode. Um, later on this week, if you're hearing this on Sunday or if you're hearing this throughout the week, we're going to be uploading our individual discussions for each conference. We'll get into it a little bit here, obviously, but we're getting way more in depth uh, announcement by announcement on those discussions. So definitely check those out if you want to see what we have to say about each individual conference. Um, yeah, so we're going to be getting into what we've been playing uh, recently. Uh, like I said, E3 was this week. I really, um, with editing and a lot of stuff I had to do, I didn't have a whole lot of time to play um, video games, but I got in a little bit of Sunset Overdrive, which Jordan's probably stoked about. Not too long, probably like a half an hour to an hour. Did some, uh, a little bit of uh, uh, missions. I did the first, uh, like, a night encounter thing where you have to uh, hold off um, the guys from the, like, the tanker or whatever. Um, I also played Limbo front to back again. It was free on Xbox One now. It is free. You should go download it. Um, after they announced the release date for Inside, they said, you know, Limbo's free to anybody on Xbox One. I uh, haven't played that game in a while. One of my best experiences on 360. So played that front to back. Almost have it perfected. I'm like at 900 out of 1,000 gamer scored. Last one is to get through the game with five or less deaths in one sitting, which is going to be fun, uh, quote unquote. Um, yeah, so just uh, Sunset Overdrive and uh, Limbo for me. What about you guys? For me, I mentioned this on one of our discussions, but I, uh, I'm i not an actual terrible person who's a shitty-ass liar. I did actually play Persona 3 this week on my PS3, so um, I am going through that, and I'm going to finish it someday. Um, and they had a awesome E3 sale for uh, PlayStation, so I picked up several games. One of those was Resident Evil Zero that I played for several hours last night. And the tank controls are definitely rough. But uh, once you get the hang of it, it's it's a cool experience and a fun game. So I'm excited to go further into that. Um, really just took a break from Witcher Blood and Wine because I mentioned they're working on the update to fix the bug I was getting. Uh, not being able to lock on in combat. So I really want to stretch Blood and Wine out anyways just because I'm... I'm going to miss Witcher 3 so much when I'm finally done with everything, even though I'll do New Game Plus at some point. So, kind of just waiting on that. Just probably wait until they update it to hop back in. And, because obviously locking on is a pretty big part of combat. So, in the meantime, I was just having a real big itch to play some Bloodborne. And so, I jumped back into that. And I'm right at the end of the story, but I decided not to mess with the last boss because once you beat him, you automatically go into New Game Plus, which I don't want to do because it would make everything harder and um, I want to just kind of stay in my little pocket that I'm in right now. So the Hunter's Dream is currently burning, but I'm not really concerned with that. I'm just messing with uh, the Chalice Dungeons, which I'm enjoying very much in Bloodborne. And um, besides that, I've kind of just been jumping around to games I wanted to play, uh, not really worrying about, you know, what I'm finishing or what I'm... What I'm uh, you know, my backlog or anything like that. And so they came out with an E3 trailer for Kingdom Hearts 2.8, which is a bridge to Kingdom Hearts 3, essentially, kind of like uh, Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes. And so I'm really excited for that, and I decided to go grab Kingdom Hearts 2.5 on PS3, which has the remaster of Birth by Sleep, the first chronological game in the series, and also my by far my favorite game of the series. So, um jump back into Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. One huge thing, real quick, about remasters. If you're going to remaster a game, do it right. And and Square Enix just pissed me off so bad in these remasters for Kingdom Hearts where you can't turn subtitles off. Oh, wow. So all the cutscenes in these 40-plus hour games, sometimes 100-hour games, are like, you know, just filled with subtitles that I do not need and do not want there, so... If you're going to re remaster your games, do them right, publishers. But, yeah, love Birth by Sleep, one of my favorite games. Love Kingdom Hearts, so loving that 2.5 HD remix. Like I said, I've been jumping around, been playing a bunch of games. So yeah, my list is longer than usual, too. Uh, so like you mentioned, there's a PSN sale, um, a really, really good PSN sale. I picked up The Order 1886 for $6 and some change. Um, cause that was when I never played. Um, and I'm just going to say that like, this game is criminally underrated. Um, yeah. and I, it might be a product of 
you know, it, instead of like things getting overhyped and they disappoint, <laughs> this had such low expectations for me that it couldn't have Been disappointed. Worse. Yeah. Right. But it's this game is gorgeous, drop dead gorgeous. Uh, first of all. And it does a lot of things right. And the story is really interesting and unique. Um, there's, a, there's a couple misses, but to me, like these misses, I see them more as like potential to like, if they fix these couple of things, this could be like a great franchise. Um, mm. I think this game is really cool. Um, it's I'm a almost solid done PS4 with it. exclusive. Yeah. And especially for $6, it's like, of course. <laughs> Um, what else is um, Nintendo is also doing an eShop sale for the week of E3. And both these sales, I believe, are going on until Tuesday the 22nd, I believe. Or maybe it's Wednesday the 23rd, something like that. So but you may or may not have time by the time you're listening to this to check it out. But definitely a lot of good stuff going on there. So for a Nintendo's eShop sale, I bought Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons and Ages for like $3 each. Um, nice. Yeah, because I used to love those games. I adore those. Those are great Zelda games. Um, so I've, I've played, been playing a little bit of Ages um, over the past couple of days. And then my surprise uh, item on this list is actually um, a product of all the Zelda hype that I've been experiencing um, around E3 and looking at the new game. Triforce Heroes. Uh, not quite. Um, oh, God, thank you. Thank you. I was, Between I was, Worlds? Uh, nope, actually, I, I played that last year sometime. That was a great game, too. But I was, you know, strolling through the used game store in town here in uh, in Michigan and saw Wii for the $40. Mom and Grop Shop. The mom and Grop Shop. So I picked up a Nintendo Wii. Wow. For only $40. A yes. um, couple extra controllers. I also picked up uh, Mario Kart because I've been wanting to play some Mario Kart recently. But then, more importantly, I grabbed um, Zelda Skyward Sword. Which is the one okay. entry in the series I'd never played, um, having never owned a Wii. So I put some time into that, and it's definitely not my favorite in the series. The motion controls, the motion controls kind of. Ooh, Nintendo. Yeah. There's some moments when you're sword fighting, whereas like now the sword fighting in this game, as opposed to any other Zelda, is actually challenging and interesting, and you have to think a little bit. Whereas before, you just button mash on guys, and there's really no, nothing to the combat in Zelda games. But this is a little bit different. But it's overshadowed by the frustration of dealing with motion, motion controls in general for simpler things. The sword fighting itself works pretty well, but sometimes there's little other things like shooting the beetle around or like gliding and you have to use the Wii remote to tilt. and That kind of stuff is painful. But Can you use a controller? I don't believe so, but I could be wrong. Back of the box usually has it for Wii games. Oh my god, if only I can't wait for you to play uh the new Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild with a magnet controller. That's gonna be great. I'll be using the Pro Controller, don't worry. <laughs> um, the NX Pro Controller. Is that everything you've been playing? That's cool though that you went back and got and that's Wii. it. Yeah. yeah, I really want to go back and hit that because it's it's another gap in the I love Zelda. I love the series, so I wanna, you know, cross that off the list and check it out. So That's awesome. Um, you guys played quite a bit. I feel kind of bad for not playing that much, but I really didn't have time, so I don't feel too bad. But um, <laughs> I've been unemployed this week, so I've had lots of time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I want to get into the – we're going to do the recap now. Uh, we had our discussions talking about the conferences, and we're going to have a topic later on talking about who we thought won E3. But this is basically – I just want to talk about the games we saw that we enjoyed and we were excited for and that we thought were awesome. Um, for me, one of the games I'm most excited for that we didn't talk about during any of the discussions just because it wasn't mentioned in any of them – Ukulele, from what I've seen, looks even more impressive than what I was expecting. Um, there's plenty of games that go on Kickstarter and don't meet expectations or don't ever come out. Man, are these previous guys, the guys that play Tonic from Rare, they're doing everything they can with this money that people gave them through Kickstarter. This game looks like, you know, a, a banjo game banjo fans deserve in the sense of the banjo games are more of a nostalgic um, piece that people like like they're not the best games but they people do have a nostalgia factor i think this game basically took what banjo did right and fixed what banjo did wrong um the characters are really cool i think the game looks visually very clean um there are there are hints to banjo so i still am not convinced that there isn't going to be microsoft um exclusive content featuring banjo and rare ip but um yeah i thought ukulele looked awesome um at each conference i think uh you know, God of War was obviously an easy talking point, and the Spider-Man game. Um, for me, for Microsoft, uh, We Happy Few, easily the best thing, uh, best game that they showed at that conference for me. Um, 
uh, the other ones, uh, they're they're not as big conferences, but those two were definitely the ones that I, I liked. And uh, yeah, ukulele really impressed me. So, what about you guys? E three, how was it? What games did you guys enjoy the most? Zelda, Zelda, and Zelda. Zelda, Zelda, and Zelda. As, as these two know, it was on top of my list. Um, they talk weren't... about a fanboy over here. That, I, I, admittedly, right? <laughs> yeah, at least you. I mean, there wasn't much they could do. They could have done to like disappoint me in what they were gonna show. I mean, it would had to be have been like real bad and like what the heck but i this was going to easily impress me regardless but i i do objectively still think that it looked great and i'm extremely excited for breath of the wild so after that excited about that name yeah i mean i think it's one of the lesser zelda names for yeah but it's the name i i think it'll uh it plays into what the game's going to be like right like there's now a way bigger open world and there's kind of more I don't know, just, it reminds me a little bit of uh, Witcher 3, Wild Hunt. That was actually the subtitle, yeah. which was interesting, and it kind of gave that, like, adventurous kind of feel to it, but it's just the title. Um, what do you think about the the VO in the in the demo? I was kind of shocked by that, but I, I think it'll be cool. I think it'll be good. They need some voice acting. I'm glad they're keeping Link, Link silent for now. I know a lot of people don't like that, and they're like, well, they need to move forward and have voice protagonists, but I don't... I. <laughs> It's it's tough. I'm I love the series too much, and I'm too much of a traditionalist to want to change that. But I do like the voiceover, you know, at the beginning winner where, uh, you know, you heard "Wake up, Link," and this and that. So I don't like that because I think like people have been waiting for voice acting in Zelda for so long, and then they just kind of offhandedly toss it in there, and people are like, "Oh gosh, this game has voice acting," but it really doesn't. So whether or not the game's empty or not, am I the only one that thinks the climbing looks super stupid? I don't like oh, yeah. the climbing animation personally. Oh yeah. Whether or not. But the, did like... you see Link slide down a mountain on his shield? I saw him jump or... into a lake naked. Well, partially naked, almost naked. Oh. Um, the game looks interesting. I'm still worried that the game's empty. It gives you everything you want from Skyrim, but nothing, nothing you want from Zelda. Um, hmm. It implements for me, and oh man, I'm gonna I'm gonna get so much flack for this. Jordan and I were talking about this. It, they're acting like all of this stuff they're adding to Zelda is revolutionary when we've seen it in open world games before. And yeah. I understand it's revolutionary because it's in a Zelda game, but like they're adding all the stuff we've seen in a video game for the past ten years and then not give me anything you love about Zelda. Like, well, that- that's just what they showed. I, I I'm confident that this is the, the regular Zelda formula with all that other stuff added on top, and they just didn't show. That traditional stuff. They didn't show you going through dungeons and getting different items. Yeah, and I agree I think with that you. Will be there. I agree with you. Nintendo's never, never. I should have no reason to think that Nintendo makes a bad game because they really don't. Um, minus like Star Fox. Um, but like, I I don't know. I'm I'm cautiously optimistic. I've said that plenty of times. That's like my phrase for the C3. But like, I Zelda's cool. I like Zelda. I'm not engraved in it as much as like you are. Obviously, you're super into Zelda. I like Zelda. I appreciate Zelda. I like Zelda games, but I just want to see why this is a Zelda game and not a Zelda skin mod for Skyrim. You know, and uh, for you, you're you're ultimately sold on it, which is fine. We're coming at it from two different perspectives. For me, I'm on the outside looking in of like, you know, I think it's just do two different perspectives. Uh, they did what they needed to do to win you over. I think they did what they needed to do to win most of the people that are like me over, but where's the hardware? Like, am I so, you know, Nintendo, am I going to buy this on a, a Wii U or am I going to buy this on the NX? Like, I think that was a huge miss for them, you know? Oh, um, that reminds me of something I forgot to mention earlier. Um, Aonuma, you know, the director for uh, Breath of the Wild, did say that the NX version would be identical to the Wii U version, but with uh, improved visuals. Was the one caveat he did, and we're going to mirror the whole world for no reason, right? So I mean, that is one, you know, one tiny little thing that for me is enough. Like, oh, I'll just I'm not going to buy a Wii U now. I'll just wait for an X and uh, pick up Zelda there. It'll look a little bit better. Well, I thought this isn't releasing for Wii U until it releases for an X, right? Isn't yeah, that what I they said? Right. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, what what about you, Jordan? What did you see at E3 that got you excited? What was what was your your game that you enjoyed seeing the most? So I'll just name off a bunch of these games and then we can kind of hop into them point by point a little bit. Um, Gears of War 4, Gravity Rush 2, For Honor, We Happy Few, Horizon Zero Dawn, Ghost Recon, Wildlands, and Deus Ex, Mankind Divided, or 
Human Revolution. Which one is it? No, Mankind, Mankind Divided. Divided. Human Revolution is the old one. Or yeah, yeah. Older and then uh, specifically with that game, the multiplayer they just introduced, um, it's like uh, kind of a simulation hacking shooter type deal, and you'll have to watch the trailer. I'm not explaining it well, but it does look very cool. Might even get me to play some multiplayer matches in that game. Um, so yeah, starting with Deus Ex, I'm super excited for that game. Love that sci-fi look and the whole talking about, you know, discriminating against human beings that are augmented. Um, gameplay looks great as far as um, how you can go stealth or action. So that one's coming out really soon, and I am very much hyped on Deus Ex. Yeah, but for me, I don't think as far as the conferences, I saw a game I super disliked. Usually uh, for these conferences, there's a game that I'm like, uh, like what? But I think this was a good E3. I think there was a plenty of games to get excited for. Um, one of the games I was, I'm most happy for, but it doesn't have a release date, is the Spider-Man game. You know? Yeah. That new Spider-Man looks that cool. That one... And you mentioned uh, Detroit was; those were both on my top five. Um, as far as this list, just kind of stuff I'm excited about. Horizon wasn't super anything spe- like anything super special that we hadn't seen already from them, or really any open world RPG. Pretty much the same with Ghost Recon, though. I am super interested in the fact that it's kind of a tactical third person Far Cry, which definitely has my interest peaked. We Happy Few, um, hoping that it comes to PlayStation sooner, but it's looking like I'm going to have to play that on Xbox. Looks really cool. Uh, we Gotta have to. The, like, it's a mic. burden. <laughs> well, you know, it's probably has probably easy easy trophies, and it's always good if you yeah, want to like, yeah, play it on Getting trophies and just, you know, having it in my PS4 library, all that sort of thing. Yeah. But I am excited for that game and the tone that it's going for. For Honor, I'm so, I don't know if I mentioned this on the podcast before, but I'm so into deep uh, sword fighting and melee combat in third person action adventure games um, which is why I love both Witcher 3 and Bloodborne so so much and um, those have really deep combat systems obviously For Honor looks like a very deep uh, sword fighting combat system. Gravity Rush 2 I love superhero games and um, I really like uh, the way that Cat in Gravity Rush or Gravity Days, if you're Japanese. Uh, I like what kind of superhero she is. She flies around, but it's like this really... Um, it, she doesn't have all that much control. She can kind of start and stop herself and send herself in certain directions. But she really can't just like zoom around like Superman would be able to. And then her combat, you know, she has like kind of superpowers and stuff. But really she uses kicks instead of like melee punches. So the whole combat system in 1 and 2 are based around kicks as opposed to punches, and I really like that. Um, Lastly, Gears of War 4. Um, Yeah, it looks like more Gears, but in a good way. They're adding new new cool stuff, different characters, um, different enemies in some ways, it seems like. And um, I think Gears of War is going to be a very solid game. Um, Probably going to do better than Halo 5 did, since it seems like the multiplayer with Halo was great, but a lot of people were disappointed in that campaign last year. Yeah, um, my closing thoughts on this recap, I would have to say, so you mentioned Ghost Recon Wildlands. Neither of you have played The Division, right? Correct. Um, so I, I, I'm I'm safe to assume that even though you, both of you didn't super like Destiny, you those shooting mechanics in that game were brilliant. Like, they were solid. I, I, I wanted to like Destiny so much. But... Yeah, um, so... The, uh, the the big thing with that is, like, if Ghost Recon has anywhere near the shooting mechanics Division had, it'll be the tightest shooting mechanics-based game that you guys will probably play in a while. I um, did. I played the Division beta, and, of course, there I could tell that I was already enjoying those yeah. mechanics there. Whether or not the game has issues running and all of that stuff with the gear chasing, that game's shooting mechanics are almost second to none. Like, they're so tight, the guns feel so right, it feels like you're shooting a gun, like... You know, the, the, that if, if Ghost Recon is any indication to be anywhere near the Division as far as just shooting mechanics, take an environment and a gameplay that people want to play over the Division, but add in those super solid shooting mechanics, and I think they have a sleeper on their hands. Like, the game looks really uh, solid. Until it takes you a clip and a half to kill someone, right? <laughs> yeah, bullet sponges. I think if they fix some of the in-game stuff and the cheating, hacking stuff, then, you know, there's just been so many issues uh, that the division community has had with the game that 
I honestly don't think the developers have responded very well to because they just haven't been on top of it like my boys over at CG Project Red would be. I will get into the division at some point. I'd love to if they kind of just, you know, fix their game. I also think that with this game, there's probably going to be a PvP mechanic to Wildlands, but it seems like the division was trying to hit that PvP really solid, and I don't think Wildlands is necessarily trying to do that. I think this is true. get four of your friends, have fun in this world, take down this cartel in Bolivia, I believe. I think yeah. it's less focused on PvP, and a lot of those issues they had were with PvP. Balancing issues, uh, the hacking issues, or cheating issues, like all that stuff. I think that has to do more with the, the P- PvP-centric part of the division, which is a huge part of that game. And I think Wildlands isn't going to have that issue, hopefully. This one's all about that tactical co-op, baby. Yep. I love it. Um, so I, I, that's that's it for me on the recap. You guys have any closing words for your recap at E3 before we get into the, all the nitty-gritty? Um, I guess we're going to talk later about stuff that we missed or wanted more of at E3. Yeah, that's next. Okay, Disappointments, cool, cool. yeah. Uh, Dom, any closing words on the recap? Anything else? No, let's get into that nitty-gritty. Okay. Nitty-gritty. So part two of the podcast, we're going to be talking about our disappointments of E3. This is either stuff that they didn't show enough of, <clears throat> Mass Effect, um, just conferences uh, in general that sucked, <clears throat> EA, um, or just things we didn't see, uh, you know, Red Dead, uh, Crackdown, release date, anything. So I just want to talk about disappointments. For me personally, the biggest disappointment though I don't reflect it, is probably not seeing Mass Effect as much as I wanted to see it. Just because you, if you've listened to this podcast or you two that are joining me, you know how much of a fan I am of Mass Effect. And yep. I just want to see anything I can of that game. And the fact that we didn't get everything we wanted is disappointing. Um, I think that the whole way EA handled their conference was a huge disappointment in and of, of itself. Um uh, it's not necessarily a disappointment, but I've talked about it. the blue ball moment of E3 for me was Forza Horizon 3's opening, just because I thought it was going to be a cool new IP and it ended up being Forza Horizon 3. <laughs> not necessarily a disappointment, but you know, for me it was like, eh. Um, not a disappointment either, but I hate that Bethesda did this is the way they teased the new Wolfenstein game with the DOS uh, thing at the beginning with the new Colossus. I would love to see anything about that game. But uh, yeah, a lot of my disappointments have to center around EA's conference in general. Um, the one disappointment I have that's not really EA um, would definitely be PlayStation's conference in the sense of I thought it was a hype trailer for PSX, Gamescom, or next year's E3. I didn't necessarily think this was a fully-fledged conference. I didn't like all of the stuff they focus on VR, though I'm probably in the minority on that. People probably loved eating that stuff up about VR. I really didn't like that they showed Resident Evil only in VR. I think that was a dumb way to show off that game. I think you can show that in the VR segment of PlayStation, but why not have the, the Resident Evil teaser trailer like you had the other games at the beginning? Like It was really weird to me to only show that game in VR. You know, um, I think that turned a lot of people off because a lot of people aren't going to play Resident Evil in VR. That's just the case, statistically yeah. speaking. More I was more- the opposite. I, I probably wouldn't have been interested in Resident Evil really at all at this point, but now that it's in VR, that's like okay, this is interesting. Now there's a compelling reason to get VR, you know, or at least one more. You're on the opposite end of it. You're somebody who's never really been involved in Resident Evil. Resident Evil is a, is a, a franchise that resonates with a lot of people, and a lot of people, you know, majority speaking, a lot of people aren't going to buy VR. It's going to sell, but it's not going to be the majority of people playing Resident Evil. Like, majority of people are going to be playing Resident Evil without VR, considering it's not a PlayStation exclusive, you know? Right, but I mean, they're, they're invested in, in the PSVR, so they want to get as much out there as they can, and recognizable IPs, too. Yeah, I agree with you, but my other disappointment is they stated that this game's going to be fully playable VR from beginning to end. How much is that going to detriment the regular playing experience? You know, is this game built to play from beginning to end in VR, and if you play it normally, it's just a, a, a game, it's nothing great, you know? That's my huge worry. One thing I forgot to uh, include in my uh, what we played this week was uh, the Resident Evil 7 teaser that they released for PlayStation Plus members, which, you know, big shout out to Sony for doing the hey, it's available right now, and then wasn't even able to download it until the next morning. <laughs> and a convoluted, job, and a convoluted yeah, way, job. too, like going here, going there. Yeah, yeah it was it was just stupid. But um, I played it, finished the whole thing. It's not very long, less than an hour, really. And it's so, so PT, guys. I mean, like, they're really... It's crazy how Silent Hills and Resident Evil, especially in the early 2000s, were these big horror franchises for video games and now they've kind of come and gone just because the you know the popularity has waned i guess and now yeah for resident evil is just copying that new silent hills that that got canceled um with the pt demo and that's basically what it is if you played pt it's 
very similar gameplay. Jared, you're wondering if VR is going to be a detriment to it. I definitely don't think it is. It's a first person, you know, exploration game, maybe going to be some shooting later on. But um, one, they also said that the teaser is not um, actually part of the game. They just made that. Yeah separately so there's that but i will say from what i got i definitely didn't feel like oh this this feels like i should be in vr but i'm not so it's not quite there it's like no it just felt like a first person game that you know we've played hundreds of times before so yeah i guess i wouldn't say anything to worry about there i guess my concern isn't necessarily gameplay it's more of the scope of the game you know like i mean the scope of the game was cool like i said you know, you've seen what pt looks like yeah so it's first person exploration through this creepy ass house and you're trying to figure out what happened to this family. I mean, it's really kind of a PT copy just, at this point. I just want to know if it's like a six-hour, you know, single-player campaign or if it's something more substantial. Like, that's what I'm worried about. That, this I don't can... even know if we're going to shoot. That's the weird part. Yeah. No, Jared, what you're saying is definitely valid. Like, very much so. Because if you're not going to play it in VR, then, you know, that you don't care about that. But yeah. that doesn't stop the developer from spending half of their time and budget on the VR version of this game. Yeah. Maybe if they never did any VR for this game, the campaign would be six hours longer or better. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think so this game's gonna right. look, Yeah, I think this game's gonna look solid in VR. I think it's gonna be a really fun experience and I think it will be fine out of VR. Like I said, my problem is the scope of the game and like the the length of the game and how much of a detriment having it front to back VR is to the to the overall, you know, critical success of this game. So And that's the problem they have because it, you know, it'd be it would be better if they would just make ground games ground up for VR, right? then you don't have to worry about, well, the non-VR part's going to suck. It's just, it's a VR game, right? Yeah. But when this is first launching, they have to use, you know what I mean? There has to be half and half to get people into the platform to buy this thing for $400, which is, although it's the cheapest one, is still a steep entry price. So it's it's that tough thing that they have to, you know, straddle that line. And my one issue is look at the games that were made to include connect support from beginning to end and move <laughs> support and move support yep. from beginning to end. Like, there isn't a huge track record for this being good. You know, Batman VR was a big announcement at this E3, and the reason that game's probably going to be good is because it was literally built from the ground up. It is a VR experience. It's right. not a game that's also a VR experience, you know? Well, the, the good news for you is, is if VR fails, like, miserably, then it'll be just like Move, and then shortly thereafter, games will stop, developers will stop spending time adding, you know, VR support, because no one, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, it, you know, it all hinges on if people buy the darn thing right yeah if enough people do then maybe we start seeing more and more and like half of games also have vr versions and who knows where it could go yeah so off of vr i think i want i really want to know what your guys' disappointments were at, with e3 like what were you disappointed to not see what were you disappointed to see you know so i'll echo uh what you said i wanted to see more mass effect and and it's all about expectations you know and managing your expectations and i expected to see more in a game that should be coming out early next year, supposedly. You know what I mean? It's this, supposed to be coming out this year. Yeah. Right, exactly. I would have expected a lot more. So this that and this this is why it worries me that maybe they're not nearly as far along as we all think, and that's why they didn't show yep. anything. So I would I'm anticipating and predicting that this is delayed to late twenty seventeen. And on top of that, yeah, EA, EA's whole conference in general. I don't need to say it again, but <laughs> I while I would have liked to see more about EA Star Wars games, I also, and again, expectation management, I didn't expect to see anything from them, right? So I didn't have a huge problem with that. They should have like just mentioned it, and that's it, not done an hour of dev diaries or whatever. But where was the Battlefront support? The right. prior Battlefront that's out, yeah. I would have they rather had them take... They more DLC to come out for that. Where was that? Exactly. They should have spent less time on these new, you know... Less time on Madden and FIFA, first of all, and less time on the new Star Wars games that there's nothing to talk about yet because they're so far out of the picture. And use that time, at least some of it, for this Battlefront DLC. That's so, or the Battlefront game that sold tremendously. Yeah. 14 million copies last time I checked. And you also just recently in the last couple of weeks admitted That's that you stripped... absolutely amazing. Yeah, and they also just admitted they stripped the single-player campaign off of it to make sure it shipped for The Force Awakens. Like, I, And they didn't even... Did they even mention Battlefront? I... Well, they mentioned Battlefront 2. They yeah, mentioned Battlefront, right. I don't think. It just seemed odd that they didn't spend at least a little bit of time going over like, the DLC that's to come for the existing Battlefront. And those 14 million people who bought your game, and probably a good chunk of them are kind of like, oh, you know, feel a little shorted, like, well, this was a good game, but it's sort of shallow type of thing. Yeah. Uh, any uh, other disappointments, or is that pretty much sums it up? 
those were the big ones. Um, otherwise, I, I we knew that we weren't going to see Neo. So, you know, I, even though I knew it was coming, though, I'm still a little disappointed. I wish uh, Sony would have jumped ahead, you know, and gotten on top of that ball and getting gotten their messaging out, um, especially after Microsoft announced Scorpio. But again, we knew that they weren't going to say anything about it. So, uh, yeah, Jordan, what are your disappointments? So I'll just go ahead and get that out of the way and echo what. Uh, you said, Dom, about EA, that their conference was terrible, and I almost stopped watching it midway through. The Mass Effect showing was really, really bad, and I mentioned in our EA discussion that I think EA has really botched the Mass Effect Andromeda showing at E3 these last three years. Um, they've, they could have done that game a lot better and, and done the fans a lot better, especially after the ending of Mass Effect 3 and the way that went. I don't want them to fumble this, and so I am worried about that game. I think it's going to be amazing when it comes out, but it's uh, it's looking kind of wobbly on the radar there, so I don't, I'm don't. i not happy at all with the way they treated Mass Effect this year. Um, definitely didn't need any more dev diaries than we got at E3 this year, which are, is not the place for a dev diary in the first place. Um... Anyways, I'll move on from that. My biggest disappointment was Hellblade. Um, Hellblade is the game that I'm absolutely most excited for right now. It is uh, being made by Ninja Theory, who are best known for uh, Heavenly Sword, which is a PS3 exclusive, and then DMC, the Devil May Cry reboot. And uh, some people also really enjoyed uh, Enslaved Odyssey to the West. I played that game. I really liked it. It was a good game. Yeah, it's kind of a cult classic. A A lot of people really enjoyed it but um anyways they are so i was watching some of their dev diaries on youtube yes that's where dev diaries go on youtube EA, <laughs> not in your fucking press conference um or like a pre-order so, bonus yeah i was watching uh the hellblade dev diaries on youtube and they were talking about their business model they want the reason they're doing all these dev diaries on youtube is to be really open and as honest as possible with the development of their game and they were breaking down their financials essentially and talking about how um, what we want to do is have an independent AAA game model and that's how we will you know develop our game and so what they're doing is they take they have 13 people working on this Hellblade game if you've seen the trailers it doesn't look like 13 people made this game and um, essentially what they're doing is since they have so many so little people working on it and they are completely independent then all they have to do is sell like 300,000 copies of the game and they make their money back, which is ridiculous because I'm sure they're going to make, you know, sell plenty more than that. Will this be multi-platform? Um, you said they're independent, so I doubt it's exclusive, right? We don't know about that yet because okay. I'm thinking maybe Sony hops on and says, hey, we'll, you know, hook you up and help you finish this game and get it out on our platform first or only on our platform who knows but well, who, who uh, says they want to do that though it seems like maybe they want to stay this independent yeah, model yeah. yeah very true so um they've bounced around platforms before they have made a sony exclusive on ps3 so who knows it could go either way but um very excited about hellblade however since it's such a small team um i'm totally understanding that they weren't there they've been at e3 they were there last year and um I don't think they needed to be there this year, but I was sad that it wasn't there because, you know, I'm so excited for that game. Yeah. Um, just jumping through the other ones, um, I mentioned Mass Effect, then Crackdown at Microsoft Conference. A lot of people have already talked about that before on the internet. Um, but, yeah, I think they're screwing that game up. It's it's getting out of hand. They need to figure what out, figure out what's going on with that game. Will we ever see that out. game? They'll get it out, but... Um, I'm hoping that it doesn't turn into another Fable Legends situation. They just kind of, you know, cancel it before they can start to hate it too much, I guess. And then, real quick, um, they did an awesome trailer um, and even had a little bit of playable demo for Kingdom Hearts 2.8, which, like I said, is the bridge to 3. Um, I would have liked to see Kingdom Hearts 3, um, but uh, I guess Square was just so wanted to focus on the shitty titan battle for final fantasy 15 at xbox and then the cringy the, vr thing the dumbass prompto vr demo at sony so don't know what the hell they were thinking i'm pretty sure that you guys covered it with uncovered um so yeah i think this would have been a cool time for kingdom hearts 3 but at the end of the trailer for 2.8 it said that one is coming out december of this year 
and during this winter we will get more announcements for Kingdom Hearts 3 so very excited for that well, one that's um, running in the same engine as Kingdom Hearts 3 right that's what they said I think the so it's a remaster of Dream Drop Distance the 3DS game and then it is a there's this part called 0.2 Birth by Sleep which is a continuation of Aqua's story from Birth by Sleep that is the closest thing to Kingdom Hearts 3. Okay. And then there's another one that's just like a CG movie that's related to the mobile game they released. Last couple games I've got here. Uh, Where the fuck is Tomb Raider PS4? Rise of the Tomb Great Raider question. PS4. Is, if it's not coming out this year, then fucking tell us. Somebody, Sony, Microsoft, I don't give a shit who. Square Enix, you know, um, the developer Crystal, Crystal Dynamics. Someone needs to get out and tell us what's going on with this game. Because they may not have sold a bunch of copies on Xbox One, but I guarantee you, that game's going to do well on PS4. And I know I'm not the only one that didn't, you know, fall hell, head over heels for yeah, Uncharted 4 gameplay. Do you think they're just trying to space it after, because they want to sell Uncharted 4, you know? Maybe, but I'm like, dude, I was playing Uncharted 4 just going, when the hell can I get to Tomb Raider? I know that Tomb Raider is going to scratch this itch, you know, way more than Uncharted could, just because it's actual exploration and... You know, RPG, RPG upgrading systems and stuff that I like in video games. And, um, you know, solid gameplay, which is something that I like in video games, too. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Rise of Tomb Raider does the gameplay of that kind of genre better than Uncharted, but Uncharted definitely right. nails the story elements. So. It's like if you guys remember the prototype games last gen. No, no one does. <laughs> Obviously, I'm a huge fan of superhero games, so... You know, I wanted something to kind of scratch that itch in between infamous releases. And yeah, Prototype is just like a broke-ass, poor man's infamous. And I wouldn't say that is how Uncharted is to Tomb Raider. But for me, I'm way, I, it's like Tomb Raider is infamous. And I'm way more looking for that than like Prototype or Uncharted. So yeah. Um, last but not least, what the fuck EA? You had this terrible-ass conference with one game announcement. You talked the whole time about um, sports games and just gave us dev diaries for Star Wars and Mass Effect. Where the hell is that Criterion game that you showed us that was like fucking pre-alpha two years ago with this random ATV and off-the-road bullshit? Like, get it together, EA. Criterion is a big studio. They've been making racing action games for years now. Their last game was Need for Speed Most Wanted in 2012, and you're telling me, even though part of them splintered off into Ghosts to go make the rest of the Need for Speed games now, Criterion should be able to show us something four years after their last game came out. They've got to be showing us something for this, whatever this game is. We don't have a name, we don't have anything, it's just, you know... Extreme Sports Mayhem by Criterion, whatever it is. So. Well, one other thing I do want to point out, I forgot to mention. Um, I will also would have liked to see EA say something about Sims 4. Um, oh. Cause that's, I don't know that that's an E3 thing so much. Yeah, it might not be the right place, but um, it's something that Emily is really big into. And when Sims 4 first came out, it was hugely disappointing. They, they sh it's like It was like going from Battlefront 2, you know, from... Uh, PS2 gen to the current Battlefront, where there's yeah, it's newer, but so much stripped out. Exactly, and and of course it all you comes pissed back. off Emily. EA. What the fuck are you doing? Exactly, and it and it all comes back slowly through DLC drops. And you think that horse armor or other games that we are that we're more into have you know cheap or uh, rather rip off DLC prices? The Sims, they absolutely milk money. Out of thing. You have to, clothes for your fake people. It's like ten dollars to get like kitchen items, and you get like a smoothie maker and some different forks and shit. It's like <laughs> like ten dollars, and it just gets worse. Yeah, it's and there's so many. It's Is crazy. Is it a mobile game? Uh, um, and <laughs> it's then nuts. one last thing, I forgot to write it down, but um, Shadow of Mordor two. I know that game exists. Don't tell me it doesn't. <laughs> there's no way that that sleeper ass hit wasn't like. Uh, green lit immediately after that game went so big and got so much critical acclaim um like i said i just bought the game of the year oh yeah what the fuck so this playstation e3 sale i'm like what are they gonna do are they gonna sell like it makes sense like watchdogs 2 was big at e3 this year so they did watchdogs on sale 
Um, uh, Resident Evil 7 was big as at E3 this year, so we had 0 and 1 on sale. But then, yeah, I'm, I'm buying Shadow of Mordor Game of the Year Edition for a few bucks on this E3 PlayStation sale. Does that mean that they were, you know, originally planning to unveil Shadow of Mordor 2 and it just didn't go through or what? Yeah, true. Completely understand that. I, oh. it, it might have been the case. Maybe they pulled out, but either way. Always pull out. I think it's been, you know, by this fall, it will have been two years since the release. Definitely time to, uh, you know, update us. At least let us know if that series is continuing, because it's not like they have all these new assets they have to make. They just stole them from Assassin's Creed 2 anyways. Right. So before we head out of disappointments, just some quick bullet points. Enough dev diaries, more gameplay. Um, also... Thank you. Yeah, also, I think, you know, even though this is a happy time of year to see all these video games, EA, there's nowhere to go but up from now. Stop bringing people on stage. Stop spending so much time on sports games when that's a it's a large audience, but not a, it's a fraction of your audience at E3. Just please learn. You don't know me yet, but you will. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, I, disappointments. Uh, so, let's get into the third part here. This is what everyone wants to hear about. Um, who won E3? You know, there's the casual answer of, we all won E3, we're gamers. But people love to have the, the conversation of, you know, who did who did better, who did worse. Um, I'm going to go real quick. Uh, I think that Microsoft and Sony had the two best conferences. We'll talk about, personally, who we think did better. For me, I think they them two had the best conferences. I think worst the first is uh, EA, obviously. UB, just because it was two hours and there was a lot of fat they could trim off. And then Bethesda, uh, they were I think they were better at hitting, hitting, hitting. Um... For me, PlayStation had, like, we've talked about this multiple times. It was a hype trailer for other conferences. Like, I liked what yeah. they showed off. Didn't feel didn't feel like a conference. Didn't feel right. The orchestra was cute. It was a little bit weird. Uh, it, was, it was weird that it played five minutes before anything and just kept playing and playing and playing. Sean Layden and Andrew House were the only people we saw. I didn't feel like they were mm-hmm. connecting with the devs at any point. Uh, Where there you were, at, Shu? Where you at, Shu, hey? There was no indie games. Uh, apparently, PlayStation is supposed to be the platform where there's all these indies. Where Zero were they? Zero indies. Uh, there was no JRPGs. We're working too hard on that fee exclusivity, bud. Where's the Nino Kuni 2 release date? Where's like these? Ooh. Where's these like other games? Like it was like, here's a game that kind of looks like Last of Us. Here's a game that kind of looks like Last of Us. Here's a game that kind of looks like Uncharted. Here's a game that kind of looks like Uncharted, and then Spider Man. Like there was yeah. n- all those games looked great, but there was no variation. For me, uh, I'll go really quick. I think Microsoft 23, best conference front to back, had the most well-rounded conference, spoke to gamers, spoke to people who owned a current Xbox, making them know why they should own an, keep owning an Xbox, spoke to, I think, PlayStation 4 gamers saying, going forward, you might want to move to Xbox with the Scorpio or stuff like that, spoke to people who haven't upgraded a next-gen console, hey, you want to play 4K Blu-rays? We have the cheapest 4K Blu-ray for you. Um, you currently play games. You want a custom controller for super cheap, relatively speaking? Cool, here it is. Um, Xbox Live, all the cool stuff, you know, incremental death by a thousand cuts. Microsoft, to me, had the best conference front to back. There's no question about that. Uh, they spoke to gamers, I think, and uh, they're doing what's in the best interest of gamers. Um, and, yeah, I think Microsoft killed it. What about you guys? So I, I totally understand you're discontent that so, a lot of Sony's games are so far out. But to me, I still think Sony won. Um, well, I'll start at the back. Obviously, EA was the worst. Ubisoft had some good games, but... They went on way too long, and I got bored. Even I even got bored listening to Matt Parker and Trey Stoner. I think I mixed those last names up, but you know, they just it just went on and it just dragged on and on, and I got sick of it. Um, and then Bethesda next, and then oh, Microsoft did so good, but I still think for me Sony did much better because even though so like most of those games are so far out, like top to bottom, they all do so much more for me than most of the games at Microsoft's conference, where the only game from Microsoft I was mostly interested in was State of Decay, maybe Gears of War, but otherwise not, nothing else there did it for me, even though you know there's there are overall closer release dates. So even though I got to wait to truly appreciate Sony's conference this year, um, I still think it was a better conference because the games that they showed were w- much better to me. Like, they knocked it out of the park, out of the park on each of the games they showed. You also, you really love the, the the Naughty Dog games though, and you don't really play indie games. It seems like so. I think yeah, they, right. it did hit it out of the park for you. Th- also, this is obviously a very subjective question. Are you really gonna love this conferencing the same conference next year though? I'm obviously being 
dramatic, and it's not probably the case, but, like, you know, a lot of these games are so far out. Yeah, and for about half of them, they'll, we'll get release dates for next fall and next you E3, hope. right? I, uh, yeah, presumably. Yeah, yeah. And then for the other half, will be, you know, no release dates, or they'll just say 2018. But I just, I, like, all the games they showed, I just like them. You know, they looked, like, so much better to me. Like, Days Gone... Obviously, I, we talked about Horizon. That looks phenomenal. But Days Gone was a nice surprise. Like, even though it is similar enough to The Last of Us, I am a little concerned about that. But I like the hordes. I, I'm really excited that, you know, you're going to be able to drive a motorcycle away from a horde of zombies type of thing. Like, I have this visual in my head of what that's going to be like. Um, and I'm, there's, you know, it, the, the way that the zombies just kind of fell like paper, like you mentioned, is a little was a little odd to me, but I'll, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt on that. Um, it's just, yeah, like, overall, Sony's games just did a lot more for me. Even God of War, which I've never been interested in at all, the the different take they've kind of gone at it with for this version um, is much more interesting and, you know, appeals to me a little bit more. Um, really, though, like, The Last Guardian, I don't even think we mentioned that once in any of our podcasts yet, which well, we is surprising. Done, we have, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, it, but... I don't get that game. I don't think I'm gonna like it. That was It'll the be, one thing. I think that game's gonna be into. mediocre at best. I really yeah, think so. Which I don't just see... sucks to the people who are waiting for it, but yeah, I don't get the appeal for that. But yeah, for me overall, I like Sony's conference better. Hmm, interesting. You're wrong. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> interesting. I want to move on to our game of the show, but uh, just to recap, uh, I felt that you know Microsoft had the best conference. By no means, Sony's wasn't bad. Uh, I just felt Microsoft was better. Dom thought Sony won. It, it, it played to his personal interest the most, which that's what E3 is for, right? Uh, Jordan was with me, so as a consensus, uh, our 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 pick is that Microsoft won E3. Take that as it, as it is, whatever. Uh, <laughs> so next we're going to be talking about our game of the show. So what I want us to do is talk individually real quick. Uh, not too long. Just go over your list of your top five games of the show from five to one, and then we'll reveal what we came to a consensus on as our controlled interest game of the show for the first year doing e3 and all that good stuff so i'll go first um, my list was actually completely different yesterday but after going over some things and, and that kind of stuff uh my list is a little bit different so at five i have the legend of zelda breath of breath of the wild um you probably heard me say multiple times that i think that the game is emptier than it should be and it doesn't feel like zelda dom's done a good part of convincing me that they probably pulled that stuff out though <laughs> the devil's advocate in me wants to say that's not the case but it still looks fun. Like, I like Zelda enough that even if it is empty, it'd still be a fun time to get in. Um, I still don't know why I should own an NX, but, yeah, Legend of Zelda looks cool. Um, number number four for me is Horizon Zero Dawn. We've talked about they didn't show anything crazy. People complained about the dialogue system. It looks like Fallout. I'm used to that weird transition. It looks cool. That's definitely a game I am jealous that is uh, that was shown at PlayStation that's coming out relatively soon before I, uh, you know, start getting Social Security checks. Um... Number three, We Happy Few, we've talked about it. Dystopian, looks awesome. Uh, the gameplay was sweet. Can't wait for that game. Uh, number two, For Honor, combat looks great. Uh, the single player, though it's not something crazy narrative-driven, it does look like a fun time to you know, get better at my sword fighting skills along this very generic -y but really cool bro story. Um, and number one for me, Ghost Recon Wildlands. The shooting mechanics, if they're anything like The Division, which I would lead to believe that they're going to be solid because Ghost Recon's always solid. Um... That game just looks fun. Looks like a blast. The fact that you can play through it by yourself or with a group, uh, you know, that takes away from the division. I think they'll fix a lot of the issues the division had with, you know, uh, enemies not scaling to certain players and stuff like that. I think they'll get this right. Um, yeah, Ghost Recon Wildlands is my personal game of the show. I uh, just loved everything about that game. So, Jordan, you go first. What were your top five games of the show? Also, uh, real quick, honorable mentions, Titanfall 2 and Prey. Those didn't really have solid gameplay, so I didn't put them in my running for a game of the show. So, good. All right. Uh, my list is a little similar. Um, actually, no, not, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dishonored was my number five. Um, I, I mean, I kind of know what it's all about already, but I loved what they showed, and I'm really excited for that. Uh, next up was State of Decay. I loved the first one. I actually haven't finished it yet, but I put a couple hours into it, and I love the gameplay. I love the the noise mechanic where every time you open a cupboard and do things like that, then it sends out a you know that a kind beacon. of that yeah. beacon where any any zombies in that vicinity would then you know, come after you. Which it's it's a cool, cool mechanic, and there's nothing really. Even though there's tons of other zombie games out there, there's nothing 
quite like that. So really excited for that. Next up is Days Gone. Um, I'm a huge fan of zombie games, which explains State of Decay. And then I also love The Last of Us. I love Dead Islands. Um, so this is just a, like a lot of people say this genre, this zombie genre is getting overpopulated, but I think this game will be different enough. Um, and I love the the biker take that they're going with this, that uh, you're going to be riding around. Exactly. That you're going to be riding around on your motorcycle a lot. Um, as a big Walking Dead fan, I got a lot of Daryl Dixon vibes from this. So really looking forward to that too. Next is uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, which although we didn't see a whole lot of new stuff that we hadn't seen before, it just still continues to impress. Like it looks amazing. And I cannot wait to play this. I'm upset that it's not going to come till February, but I'm glad, you know, let them take the time they need to make sure this is as polished as it polished as it should be. <laughs> as Polish as it should be. <laughs> yeah, as Polish, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I really liked Horizon. I thought it showed very well. But of course, number one for me was Zelda. Um, I kind of already knew that this was going to be the case coming in, and everything they showed was just what I wanted to see, and it... I think they knocked it out of the park with this game. Um, I think they definitely are going to have, you know, this typical standard Zelda stuff that we're used to on top of all these new RPG elements that they've added. I think they just didn't want to show some of that older stuff that we know is going to be there anyway. Um, so I I'm, I'm, don't even own a Wii U or obviously not an NX, yet this is what I'm most looking forward to out of everything we saw at E3. And I thought it showed really well everything you know all the demos they went through um everything looked fantastic so i'm super pumped for zelda um so the cool thing about this is our list very uh feature very few identical games uh we're pretty different on a lot of them which i thought was pretty interesting it just shows how wide and expansive e3 is for people's tastes um so when it came down to game of the show as controlled interest as a whole uh there was three uh we did a we did a point system when we came to legend of zelda having six points horizon zero dawn and dishonor 2 um, we eliminated Horizon, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn after talking and figuring, yeah, this isn't, uh, to, to Dom's point, they didn't show anything new per se. It still looks like a solid game. No one's thinking this is going to be bad. They didn't pull a Final Fantasy XV. But, you know, we wanted to give it to, Horizon Zero Dawn got plenty of game of the shows last year. So um, it, so then it came down to Legend of Zelda and uh, Dishonored 2. Uh, Dom voted for Legend of Zelda because why wouldn't he? Um, <laughs> and I voted for Dishonored 2. And the, 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 the breaking vote was Jordan and he chose Dishonored 2. Um, both of these games look cool. Uh, Zelda could easily be in game of the show, but man, Dishonored 2, even though I didn't like the first one and I probably won't buy the second one, it still was impressive. I was still visually entertained. That time thing was so cool. Like, whether you like Dishonored 2 or not, or I mean, the Dishonored as a franchise, that whole spectacle was awesome to see. So yeah, Dishonored 2 is our quote-unquote game of the show. I'll probably make a neat little graphic that we'll tweet out later this week, um, with a little ribbon I'll make or something. Um, but before we get out of here, it was a, you know, cool E3. I enjoyed it. I'm pretty sure everyone did. Um, yeah, the hype is strong. So what we're going to be playing this week, I don't know specifically. I'm probably going to try that Limbo achievement until I get irritated with it. Um, I'm going to be playing some Sunset Overdrive. Uh, XCOM. Oh, yeah, XCOM, uh, Enemy Unknown, and uh, The Crew are now available for Games with Gold. So download those if you're interested. I'll probably dabble with The Crew. I'm not super into racing games, but... Uh, Ubisoft makes pretty solid games for the most part, so I'll definitely see what their take on racing is and stuff like that. Uh, Enemy Unknown looks interesting, too. I want to see what that game's about. People love it, so... Um, what else? Uh, yeah, Sunset Overdrive. I need to get back to Quantum Break. This will be my week to get back to games and stuff, so... Yeah, I'm not making too many promises as to what specifically I'll be playing, but those are in the uh, in the grab bag of what I, I might go into. So, what about you guys? So, I'm going to finish up uh, Order 1886. Only got a little bit left in that, uh, for my best judgment. And then I'm going to get back into Skyward Sword on the Wii. On the Wii. You're the only person playing the Wii at this point. Jared, except for all those people still playing, um, what's the dance game from Ubisoft called? Just Dance? Yeah, all those people that apparently still buy Just Dance for the Wii. God. Ugh. Or Wii Sports that still played it. You know, actually, Wiis are pretty big in, uh, not to go off on a tangent, Wiis are actually pretty big in nursing homes. Uh, a lot of nursing homes have them so people, the, the, old, the old people can play uh, Wii Sports and stuff and get a little bit of uh, work out there. For me, I definitely want to get around to playing Chrono Trigger. I think that's something that's a definite hole in my backlog of just being a gamer that I, it seems like it's the RPG everybody always, talk about, everybody always talks about. Like It's something I need to play, I think. So I definitely want to get around... 
Yeah, um, unfortunately, I don't have a Vita. I'm sorry, I'm the I'm the problem. Um, before we head out, I want to say uh, thank you guys for listening, watching, sharing. Uh, we have our tweet out for the Star Wars giveaway. We're going to be uh, announcing the winner next episode, so uh, next Sunday when this comes out. Um, just make sure two things. You retweet it and you're following us. Uh, if you're not following us, you're not eligible to win, unfortunately. Um, we're getting a steady income, steady, I guess, inc- stream of followers, I guess, on Twitter is the right way to say that. Um, yeah, thank you guys uh, for listening, sharing, watching all of that stuff. Hopefully you enjoy our individual discussions that are going up later within the week. They're deep cuts into all the specific announcements. They're usually between a half an hour and an hour long. We definitely get into everything. Um, so, yeah, thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for watching all that stuff. Share us if you can. It definitely helps us. And we'll see you guys in Episode 17 and beyond. Any closing words, guys? I believe Rockstar said that we should see some new stuff from them soon. Yeah, catch you guys next time in episode 7. Don't get your jimmies rustled too much, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.